important uh, part of the process, right? Um, so uh, that's something which uh, Docs42 have been expertising in for for the many, many years. And uh, one of the things I'm very proud of is that you're our community supporter um, partner for this event uh, in helping us support and, and making this event happen. So again, thank you so much, Docs42, for being the uh, community partner, not only for, for this FinOps event, but for all our other Dynamics and Power Platform events that we're happening this year. Uh, and one of the things that we can do is support the speakers and uh, prizes and, and swag uh, and everything else that we're doing. So again, thank you so much, Docs42. Thank you, Raz. One quick question before we, um, we, we have some interactive links in there and um, we can't access the chat for the moment. Can I send them to you via mail? Yes, please. Yes, let's get those um, links in. Um, I'm sure many people will have questions. Um, so that's so, um, to, to Raz at powercommunity.com. Yeah. Is that good? Yes, correct. Yeah. Perfect. There are some questions in there that we will post later. <laughs> yes, we want to make it interactive today. <laughs> it's not just for you getting to know us, it's also about us getting to know you. So there we go. Can and you see there the you are. Here you are, everyone. So there are the interactive links. If um, you can see the chat window, we have some interactive links there for you all. Right. They will they will be later on, so um, let's get started. Great. Yes. Today, it's all about documents, and we've all received documents in the past, and we all needed to create documents already. And now, if you think about document automation or document generation from D365, from finance and operations, and all the business processes, there are a lot of documents involved. Like, for example, you close a deal, you need to send an invoice, or you purchase something and you need to send an order. Chances are, if you had had to have create documents created in the past, that you might have um, intercome some challenges. Luckily, we have, we have a solution which we're going to introduce you to today, how you can have a really powerful document automation for the 365 FinOps, and we've prepared a few cool things on that. My name is Lisa. I'm Senior Technical Evangelist at Docs42, and I'm really excited to be joined by my colleague Johannes today. Yeah, hi everyone. Again, great. Thank you very much for having us, Raz. It's it's incredible the events you always build up, and um, yeah, the, the community is just something we we really love. That will something that will leave will Lisa talk about in a second. Yeah, happy to be here, and we're very very much looking forward to a cool session today. Yes, speaking about the community and the power community, as Raz had mentioned before, we've been supporting and we've been part of the power community for quite some time now. And back in the days, we were even able to meet many of you in person. So we even got to meet Darth Vader. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> interesting, who of you can guess who that actually is? A hint, he's quite famous in the community, <laughs> and he just did the introduction of us. <laughs> Have we heard but, him lately, I think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Good. So we were able to meet him in the past and support like events in London. We've also been at other events, like this one is an example from Munich. We've had the pleasure to support the community in Amsterdam. Another example, we were in Dublin, in Belgium, in so many of the events. And one thing, so for us, it, was, it has been really valuable always to be part of those events, to meet people, to hear all the sessions, and to learn so much. And we always wanted to give something, a small thing back to the community. So if you look closely, a few pictures have something in common. You can see a green circle on Darth Vader already. He has a Lego set in his hands. There's even someone else with a Lego set in their hands. And another person. So um, you can see so many Lego sets. Of course, we thought even though it's virtual, we also gonna have a leveled Lego set for you and we're gonna deliver it right at your doorstep. But we thought we're not gonna make it too easy. So to win this also an amazing Lego set, we thought of a small raffle. So here's the first interaction we've prepared and planned for you. 
we either have, you can either um, follow the link we have up here or scan the QR code. So get your phones ready or your QR code, re uh, QR code readers ready for the raffle. But you can start filling it in already, but don't be hasty because your chances of winning might improve if you pay a lot of attention on what we're going to cover in the session today. But Johannes, tell us, what should the people be paying attention to today? Yeah, thanks again, Lisa. Yeah, like we said, it's all about document automation. Um, so also want to give you some, some brief best practices and challenges in, in everyday life. Many of you probably have encountered some of those in, in your projects. Um, yeah, then we will have a look into the Docs 42 side of it. We will have most parts of it is going to be a live demo as yeah, we all like to see what's going on in the system actually. And if you have a look into the raffle link Lisa has just sent previously, we will cover the sales invoice and there might be some puns that could hint you in winning the, the Lego. Um, yeah, and then of course um, go through the setup and finance and operations and how you can basically, for example, define that the sales invoice is connected to some Word document um, as well as the template design in Office directly. So there's Word, Excel and PowerPoint for you to use. Um, we will also cover a document that is not necessarily based on a report. So it's going to be a, a document just on an entity. Yeah, and eventually we will also see um, that this option that we show you today is not only available in finance and operations, it's also available in SharePoint as well as Dynamic CE. BC is something we will not cover today, but it's also going to work in there. So the, the idea is document generation as a tool can be integrated into many, many different scenarios. The one that we see today is finance and operations. Okay, yeah. Q&A as they always is, but feel free to ask anytime um, and just interrupt. So the first question will be um, to you. Do you already know Docs42? It's always interesting for us that if we speak at conferences to see um, how, many, how many people have been in contact with us. For this, we have included some Microsoft Forms in here. So the links RAS has posted. Um, there is a question one. Um, and yeah, if you want to add info to here so there is also a QR code that you can scan directly um, and yeah feel free to to answer that question it's just for us to getting to know um, if you've already seen some of this or if you don't know any one more response is coming in great thanks yeah, it's, I guess there's a clear trend here. So not yet, seen or you know, heard a bit, some of you. Perfect, yeah. Um, well, for, for us, we are um, as a company coming from Austria and is of course our approach to make this more global, to make this well known. And as you see here, it's a good idea to be part of this community as many of you don't even know us. What do we do? So we basically cover the topic of structured documents. And the challenge usually when it comes to stru structured documents is that there's on the one hand a lot of different data sources, um, like there is finance and operations, but since Microsoft is basically kind of reducing the limits between the different dynamics modules, it's important to also get other data sources in there. Maybe also some SharePoint data, some Teams data, and at the end of the day, have nice looking PDFs, emails, um, PowerPoints, reports, invoices, whatever the document can be. And as probably many of you have seen in your projects, they can be complex. So that's a very important thing to address to just be able to design complex documents. If we have a look into a lot of the projects you've done, um, also in, in, in real life business processes, the challenge with document automation is, well, there are basically three types that usually work for this. So, of course, there is the classical copy pasting. So not necessarily the, the classic FinOps case, but um, yeah, it's in many cases that if you just think about your last two or three work weeks, how many manual documents had you have, did you have to do, although they could have been automated. At the same time, there is the one person we all know, there is the VBA macro expert. So if somebody is already familiar with VBA macros, it's good for like a start into automation, but server side, there is no real option to use that. 
if that person leaves the organization, well, it's going to be a dead end in this case. And yeah, they're the challenge of the VBA micro expert. The last one you've probably worked with the most. So there is, of course, SSRS, as we all know the standards, um, or the improved version now with business documents. And the challenge with especially SSRS at the moment is it's still very programmatic, which can be great in some cases, um, but in design-wise, business user-friendly documents, pay, um, examples, um, it, it's hard to program a document. So it's rather having it in office. And there is, of course, the, the, the business documents that started with a, with a little bit in that direction. Um, today, we're going to cover the whole aspect with this. Now, if we, if we look at the options um, you have for your projects, um, as well as generally the options that are out there on the Microsoft platform, they either cover the one side or the other side. So either it's going to be like just in Office, which is the manual process at the end of the day, where you basically well have to copy the old V734 final and reuse it again. Or on the other hand, you have the, the server-side automation. So if you if you just go for the server-side automation, it's perfectly available anytime, works most of the cases great. But the, the business-friendly way you would, to, would like to design in an office is something that's not that easy to do. And that's the approach we take on covering both sides. So on the one hand, we have the office formatting. So we will do the, the design changes in office today. But also we have a server-side automation. And most importantly, that server-side automation is not only available for FinApps, but for a lot of other different data sources as well, which makes it technically very flexible in terms of the architecture to use it wherever you want it to use. If we look at this two slides that we just had from a business perspective, the challenge in, in the roles or in the project, um, we just had some, some great insights previously, um, is that with the different um, roles that you have in an organization, getting documents the way that the IT should have it, the, the business users should have it, the marketing requirements. So meet all of these different requirements is a very challenging task. And that's the exact task that we like to slim up with a very easy process, um, where in IT you basically have a data source where you connect to finance and operations, the FinOps, um, data sources like uh, like a report, like an entity, maybe also some data that you get from CE, from BC. Um, Business-wise, you have an office document. So that office document can be very user-friendly. And the way it's usually done in projects is that when you, when you have some power users, for example, from the business units, they would then be the one designing the documents. And you either as a partner for your customer or if you are with the customer um, in the IT department, then you basically just take the, the office format, you, you provide the people with the, with the template, and still the design can be done in the, for a power user with the, business, with the business units. A little background about us. Um, yeah, we've seen some, some like the, the classical Vienna buildings um, that you probably um, have seen somewhere in, in the internet, or maybe you've even been in Vienna. And we're currently um, in contact with 400 customers, so there's 400 customers using Docs42 across all different industries. Because at the end of the day, a business process requires a document and a document generation solution requires flexibility to be integrated into different data sources. Yeah, in best case, maybe you already work on some of these organizations, but still just to give you a little background on, on how that usually works with a customer, um, there are some, some cases we want to, to include you with. The first one, well, many of you probably know ABB. Um, in this case, they use it with their, their CRM system. So the same way we see it today in FinOps, there's also the option to use it in, in CRM with the good case of the designer doesn't need to care if it's going to be FinOps data or CE data. Um, it will be the same in the office. In the ABB case, um, it helped them leverage the potential in the sales and service platform. So basically, um, documents that had to be done, either they weren't really the, the way it was supposed to be optically or they had to be programmed. This was the way to go um, for, the, for them to basically automate that with condition, with text blocks automatically from CE. And which, which is the case with many of the, the customers you see here is that Docs42 as, in, as a solution in an organization grows. So we had the, the sales and service first in ABB, and then it became a topic again also for contracting. 
So they had um, some contracts they generated from, from SharePoint, um, as well as well more requirements coming from the business on automated documents. A similar case, um, well, probably many of you have customers or even you work, for example, with, with retail and food. And if you if you know Germany, there is um, the, the Rewe Group, uh, which is one of the biggest retail food markets in, in Germany. And if you consider the that parts in, in for example, in the, the situation we are now, and so if in, in, in a COVID situation, the document is in a really integral part and in a really integral process of the delivery change, chain. And yeah, as part of this, they have been able to adapt changes very flexible and very easily and uh, without the need to program them right away. And similar Transcomé, as you see, as you read here, um, if you're from, from the business units, the break even point was reached really quickly, uh, which for business people usually is, is, a, is a good sign. Bomit in Germany, same thing, um, in this case with the logistics requirements. And we will also later on see there is the option to integrate different barcodes, charts, um, to basically match also the light logistics criteria. Yeah, and um, the last one I just want to mention is in terms of energy, energy and utilities, very similar case. And I guess in terms of performance, this is an important part um, since in energy and utilities, it's usually common that at some point you need to generate a lot of different documents, um, which can be millions per night or per, per day. And that's a load the Docs42 server was able to handle for those customers as well. So much for the project. Um, Lisa, can you let, tell us a little bit about how this actually works? Yes, of course. So I'm going to start with showing you a few slides and the theory of how it works before later on we will, of course, give you the live preview that you can actually have some proof that it really works from finance and operations. But in general, Johannes has mentioned a few times there's no programming involved you design the templates with the Microsoft Office, so in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And here in this slide, you can see on the left-hand side a template, and on the right-hand side, the generated document of it. And we can see that we can not just integrate textual data, like here, Selina Bente, but that you can also integrate, for example, pictures. You could add dynamic charts, so you could use that for your reporting, you design that in Word, um, or you could also integrate dynamic tables. So the table row would expand or would would like diminish depending on how many rows you have. Those are just a few examples. You could also add some calculations, barcodes, conditions, repeated sections, and so on. But more later in the live part. Then of course that's the template design, which is done in Microsoft Office. What's super important is, of course, the data integration. So today we are um, at the FinOps event. So I guess that integrating data from the Dynamics FinOps might be really relevant to you. With Docs42, you can, of course, integrate the, that data, but you're also able to integrate some other data sources. Speaking on the Dynamics platform, you could also integrate CE, you could integrate BC, but it could also be external data sources like SharePoint, something via XML JSON. It could be web service, databases, Excel, or SAP. And you can even mix those data sources. You will see some examples of, of that later on. But first, a question back to you. Out of all those data sources, which ones are actually relevant to you? Which ones are you interested in and which ones are you using? We're going to post again the forms mm -hmm. this is with another question. And depending on what you mention here, we can spontaneously then decide which demos we can show you if you're interested in some more data sources than just spin up. OK. Where should you see mm -hmm. people? Of course, a lot of people from for FinOps, um, SharePoint. It's I think the logical step of combining or Microsoft combining the different data sources. Mm -hmm. Also, databases, SQL. Of course, I, I guess the, the, those are the ones that are, that have worked also with with the X quite some time as the as the SQL base. Um, web service, of course, and Excel. Perfect. Yeah. Great. 
more Good. response That's coming in. Let's just give it 10 more seconds. Yeah. Let's see if there's anybody still jumping in from the CE part. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. perfect. All right. Thank Thanks again for your responses. Good. Thank you. Very interesting to see. And so let's continue with our slides. Then, of course, one part are the different data sources. And then, of course, the other part is how you can integrate them. That also works within Microsoft Office. We have a data map designer where you can connect to your data sources all without programming. You have different data sources available, like here are finance and operations data source, a report data source, and an OData data source for the entities you connect to your system. And then you can just simply insert the data fields via drag and drop onto the desired position in a document. And then you can design it however you want it, with the normal Microsoft Office functionalities. So really everyone that has designed a document before, that has worked with Word documents before, is able to design Docs42 reports. So that can really be done by business users, which of course is also in the live demo. Then next to just adding data sources, Docs42 has some few other really powerful uh, possibilities and potential. One of them is really using Excel as a calculation and charting engine. You, for example, have some charts stored in an Excel, and then you make those charts dynamic with data coming from Dynamics FinOps, and then later on you integrate the data back as an image into the document. So really depending on what, which data you give at the time of generation, of course, the chart is going to look differently. The same would work for calculations. If you have some further calculation, for example, a special discount that should be calculated based on some condition, you could use some Excel in between and write the, the, the calculated numbers back into the document. That's one possibility. Um, Something else that's very important when it comes to ERP documents are uh, QR codes and barcodes. So that's also a way on how to integrate them, on how to, to insert them. Um, really easy, a lot of our customers are using that for their labels or our Swiss comp uh, customers, they are required now to use like a small Swiss cross into their QR codes, which they put on invoices. That's also possible with Docs42. Good. Then when it comes to generating your document, just generating, for example, a PDF and returning it might not be enough. Output management is also very important when it comes to document automation. And Docs42 provides you with a lot of flexible possibilities there. Of course, you can generate, for example, your invoice as a standard PDF, PDF A, PDF forms. You could also generate Word documents, for example, for your archives. Excel PowerPoints are also possible. Plus, you could store these documents automatically to SharePoint, including dynamic metadata that's written with it. So you could use it for archiving. You could also store it to Teams, so collaboration is a big topic. Or, of course, sending by email, either straight away um, from the system or by generating a draft email, changing it a little bit yourself and then sending it out. Um, of course, electronic signature like DocuSign or any other signature tools, another possibility, printing, many times very important for ERP, FinOps documents, and a few other options are there as well. Plus, with Docs42, you always have the option, both for the input and for the output, if you have some special requirements, some special needs, a special format, you can also ex always extend it with a custom output action. And a few of them also in the left demo, which you will see. Um, and then Docs42 is available um, in the cloud, it's available as Docs42 online in a pure cloud service, so you can upgrade your document automation generation to a cloud service using using Docs42. We're using Azure Active Directory, 
impersonation there and yeah, powerful document automation in the cloud using Docs42. In combination with business processes and workflows, Docs42 can also be triggered. So for example, if you're using Power Automate, if you're using Power Apps, Docs42 can be integrated with those workflows as well. So to schedule, for example, every Friday, the report should be printed, that's no problem. Um, and that can really be done with any workflow tool, is it from the Power Platform, or um, it could also be something external like Firestart, Nintex, or K2. So really integration into your business processes because the outcome of nearly every business process is usually a document. And so much about the theory to give an introduction to that. Johannes, can you prove us now in reality or in our live demo that what I've told the audience is actually working? Absolutely. So like the best part <laughs> going into the live system. Let me just move teams over here really quick. Okay. Well, you probably or many of you are familiar with this. So that's the invoice journal. And what I'd like to do is just simple thing, generate an invoice. And instead of moving to to the standards, um, this is just been pointing to Docs42. And maybe also since you've seen that um, in the beginning there was a ruffle, there can be a pun in this. So the, the pun might already be visible in the very beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, the pun is here. Maybe that's the pun. Um, in any case, most importantly in terms of the data, um, the challenges like this one is a doc. It's just an image in, in the Word document. We will have this fixed in a second, um, which will be then a live part of the of the designer. But still, just in here, as you see, all of the data you will require for one of these documents from the from the sales invoice header, um, as well as there are the line items. So the line items with the according, also um, of course formatting with the symbols, the decimal like the the decimal symbols corrected as well as with the currency symbol coming dynamically from here. We also have a, an advertisement down here, which um, Lisa, maybe we can change this later to make it more power community like. Um, this would be a really cool thing. And of course, um, there is a switch from portrait to landscape. Um, so that's in Word, very easy thing to do. And there are also the general terms and conditions. Now. In this case, the, the terms and conditions is part of the document, but very importantly, also with Docs42, you can integrate documents in documents. So one case would be having the terms and condition just at one location and integrating it into another document. Before jumping into the design, um, let me just briefly show you one thing that we did when clicking this. So an archive in our scenario is enabled for an output um, that in this case is a SharePoint library um, probably many of you are familiar with the way a SharePoint library looks. And as you've seen a few seconds ago, my user has just created a document in here and also the naming of this, of this is dynamically. So basically the invoice idea here comes from data that is from FinOps. The invoicing name comes from FinOps as well as the, the document name um, is dynamically. And if I open this, you will see it's the same file that we've just Zoom in a little. It's the same file that we've just produced in FinOps, but in this case also as an archive into SharePoint directly. And of course, again, switching from portrait to landscape. One more thing that I'd like to show you is um, in, in our live demo, we've also configured the print management to use Docs42 as an email output. Um, in a second, we will jump into the design part after that, we will also have all of this configuration seen. Um, so the details on this will be revealed. But if I use the print management down here, this will again trigger the Docs42 server to send an email, or you can also have it sent through the SMTP of the, of the FinOps system. And 
grid management was successful, which is great. Let's just move to our user that is um, the one is the address here of this of this demo. Um, you've seen we've just tried this. Well, it's this is CET. Um, we will receive the new email in a second, but it's basically the same one that you see here, where um, the whole design of that email is also based on a Word template. Now we've received the invoice as well. It's, that's great. With some dynamic data in here, um, as well as the logo. So well, it's a simple Word document, but still this is a Word document. It's also business user friendly design wise. And if I again open the attachment, just open on my second screen, you again see the very same document with also the pun we have, um, with the, the, the great trips, including. So basically the very same document, but in this case as an email. Before we'll jump into the, the way we would design this, um, it's again a question to you. So it would be interesting for us, based on the current options you have, um, how long would it take you de to design the sales invoice that you have just seen? We will again have the QR code ready here. Um, you see there are some options of below 30 minutes, 30 minutes to two hours, two to eight hours, or is it going to be a couple of days more? Um, or even not possible. Okay, first response is coming in. Oh, sorry, I need to paste the, the sharing option again. Or also, I hope you have received the links. or my answers coming in. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a good mix. Um, this was, I think, a test from us, or maybe it was somebody. Um, if you show us the option, that would be really great as well. But uh, somewhere between 30 hours and two, 30 minutes and two hours is the is the average. Um, Lisa, can you show us how you do it really quick? Yes, give me five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna gonna do that. So I will jump into the template design. And I'm actually starting here in SharePoint. Um, because with Docs42, we can manage our templates on SharePoint. And I'm just gonna just click here on, we can see it on the whole screen. Yes, this is better. So basically with Docs42, even though your templates are finance and operations templates, FinOps templates, you can manage them um, within SharePoint. So you could have a team of power users, of design users that actually work on those templates. And then if someone comes to them and asks them, hey, can you please make a change on my template? I need to adjust something. They can just go into their SharePoint. Here we have a library for the SO templates. And then here we have a list of our templates we're using. And today we're using the sales invoice in English. And I'm gonna open this one now. We're in my Word. And then instead of the generated document, we will see a document. And the last time you will see a hint for our raffle today. Um, here I'm just logging in. We have a document with a lot of blue data fields. So we call them doc 42 two data fields. Those are basically the placeholders. And if I click on one of those data fields, like here this invoicing, I can see where my data field comes from. Aha, uh -huh. this is called invoicing name. And this actually, this is coming from my finance and operations data source sales invoice. If I click on an, another one, like here, this is the VAT VAT number, and this is also coming from the sales invoice. So if I'm the one that has to work on those templates, that has to adjust it, I can always see, okay, where does actually my data come from? If I make this a bit smaller, I can see here all my data sources, those are finance and operations. Here we also have some Excel data sources plus 
a dynamic CE data source. So what we've mentioned before is that we can have um, various data sources from different systems. So good, now I need to adjust something. And what I want to do is I, this actually should be the address, it shouldn't be the Lego. So I'm still actually, I'm gonna remove this one. And I say, okay, instead of this, I want to have my address shown. So um, I know here my invoicing name is coming from the sales invoice. But then below that, I want to have the invoicing address. Here we have sales invoice, invoicing address, and then I just double click and insert it into the document. And then maybe I also want to have this one in bold, so it's really obvious to see, and I have my changes ready. So before I explain you some more on the document, I want to check and see if my changes were already effective. So what I do here within Word, I have here my Docs 42 ribbon. This is where I design my templates. This is where I have all the options at my data sources. I can click on Generate here locally. It's going to save the document and store the new version back to SharePoint. And now it's going to ask me which sales invoice I actually want to generate. I say it's this transaction ID, and now I'm getting my document returned in Microsoft Word with data, live data coming from finance operations. And we can see the picture is gone. And instead of that, we have the address here. And if we move it side by side, we can actually see what has happened. So we can see here, we have our invoicing fields that's turned into the invoice or down below we can see a table and this is actually a dynamic table so we can see we've only inserted the data fields for one line but here we have actually th three lines so the table automatically extended and this is done here with our automate range functionality and here we said okay everything that's between the starting and this endpoint here should be repeated for the sales invoice line. And because we had three products, this was added repeatedly. What else would we have here? Like here we have a gray area with a question mark. And this question mark actually shows us a condition. And here we have a condition. We say, okay, only insert this line if the text code is not empty. Apparently there was a text behind, so we can see the VAT19, there was text so actually, this is why this line was added. And what's also always very important, if I click on here, so this is actually a number. And here we can see we have a number format here. So we can actually add a format string and also in which culture a number should be shown. So for example, if your data um, is uh, your your finance and operations data is, is like in, in German number format, but you're generating documents for India, you can change the format string here. And then before I show you another cool thing to make it more cool for the power community, this template, I'm going to show you the data map design. So here within the data map, I can actually add all my data sources, the starting from SQL to SharePoint to web services to here I have my entity and my report data sources. So here my sales invoice as an example. That's a report data source where I can connect directly to my finance and operations. So here I have my connection. I can either connect with a user or with client credentials and then here I can choose my report, which I want to read the data on, the table I want to read data from, and also the fields I want to read. That's one possibility for so working with report data, but then there's also another possibility where you actually work with the entity. So that's completely independent from reports. You can also connect directly to data from entities. And actually here, it's loading data now from a thousand of entities within finance and operations. So you can really connect to any data sources because we want to make it as flexible 
as possible for you to um, to use Docs42 and how to connect to your data sources from finance and operations. Um, so in in our scenario in this template. We're actually using different data sources. We're using report and entity data sources. So we're using both. But later, Johannes has another example where he's using data just from, um, just from entities. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going to. Leave that for now as, as with the explanation. But then there was one more thing. Johannes has also asked me to make the template a bit cooler for the power community. So what we we had seen down here below, we had here a small advertisement for a trip to Switzerland. And this advertisement, if I double click on here, this is actually a Word document we've been integrating. So I want to change that Word document to something that's more appropriate for the power community. And I have this Word document. I have it stored also on my SharePoint. So here I have my app. And I can adjust it. And I say I want something else in here. I want another picture to be added, and I want to say win a meet and greet with Darth Vader at the next power event. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So picture and this is saved on SharePoint and then to show you that this is actually live I'm going to going back to my document here within Word I'm generating it and then all the live data and you can meet the uh, Win a meet and greet with Darth Vader. So uh, basically, this is the template design and how fast and easy you can make changes. And this is how it looks like in Office. But Johannes, can you show us that this is also already live for finance and operations? Absolutely. Right. Let's get back to the invoice journal and. The same thing I've just didn't done previously, I'll just redo them. So let's say Lisa has been the power user who helped me with the with the design. And this has gone through some staging process and now the document is live again. And just based on the very word document, we have in this case edited as in theory, in theory the live document. If I again go for the original preview with those changes, um, there should be two changes, the address and of course Darth Vader should be there as well. All right, so the first one to prove that there is the address change in here. Um, of course, there can be much more complex things. It's just for us important to show you something that's really changing in a live demo, which is this and also the sub document with the great business case of, let's say somebody doesn't even know what Docs42 is or how to use it. Still, if they change the sub document like Lisa has done, um, this would be as an advertisement or maybe an event invitation or something that sales or marketing units could use for, for document generation um, to be used from here automatically. Of course, while doing this, the same thing again has happened to our, to our archive. So again, I've generated a new document with the advantage of SharePoint and the versioning. Of course, this would also be then you will see what the, what the other options were with also here. The address has changed. Also here, you can see Darth Vader in the version history. I'd be able to see also the old versions of what has changed. And lastly, again, generating an email from the print management. We will again get the same email. Again, the
the inbox to here. So this is sending and receiving. That looks good as well. Just see if there's some. Walking through these the spheres of exchange <laughs> all the way into my inbox. Yeah, and again, the attached document just seen again is the different document. So here we can have Darth Vader and we also have the address here. The thing that's probably hugely missing for you at the moment is where does this all come from? And um, the information or the, the Docs42 configuration is part of a deployable package or also a, um, deployable with the via the source code into just the docs into the system administration. So if I have a brief look here, you'll see there are some new options that you get when installing the, when, when deploying the deployable package through the, through the lifecycle services, the docs for the two parameters, the email senders and the SharePoint sites. The latter ones are basically just some configurations on who is going to send the emails. The SharePoint sites is the configuration on the archive, for example, we had the most important one um, for our scenario is the docs 42 parameters. So that's basically the point where you define whether a report is going to be generated with docs 42 or with the standards. Um, there is a service configuration behind this, like we mentioned, docs 42 is an external service. Um, there is a user configuration behind it, but most importantly, there are some reports in here. And the one, remember if um, Lisa has just previously shown us the report data source, there were just a random list of, of reports. The reason is because here you can define which report should be accessible via Docs42. And for example, if I check out the sales confirm here, and if I want to switch to something else, all of the reports available in FinOps will be available here as well. The one we've just used is the sales invoice. And also here there is the archive setup, there is the SharePoint mapping, and again the report setup, which is that entry point where you define where a document is as a Word template saved, which in our scenario was the Word document, Lisa's just edited. So you see that's the link to a SharePoint document that you can then define in here and it will work with the base that you have designed in the SharePoint. The email template is something that I've shown you not really so far, but I will in a second. And in this, you will see that there's again is a Word document. So the, the email body we've seen is designable in, in Office and the rest of the configuration. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but it just shows you the flexibility of um, having an email subject also with, with variables, of course, of the attachment names, also the attachment of the email was based on the, on the invoice ID and also some sending types, which are not necessarily the, the deepest focus for today, but the, the email body, if we again just open the SharePoint library that Lisa has shown us, there is um, also a mail body in here. And again, I can do the very same thing and open this in my app. And what was our mail? mail body before now is, as you see here, a Word document. Perfect. Um, a little bit about the archive setup. So basically, we've used SharePoint. In here, you can define printers to be the archive target. And in our case, the print destination we've chosen for our archive is Docs42. And you can further specify if you want this to be sent via email, um, if you want to print, also have it print on the screen uh, through a printer, as a file to a server, as an email, or like we did in SharePoint. And also dynamically, you can define the file name in, the, in here if, there, if you want to have a different format for this, or for example, if you want to output an XML that would then be used by another application, that would also be an option. So most importantly, for the archive, the flexibility is very high. And even if the customer has a different archive, um, can be accessible from finance and operations directly. The reports are something we did for the sales invoice. Um, we've also promised you that there is some documents that are just 
based on entities. And the one we have is based on the, on the vendor entity. So if I switch to my all vendors, and this button up here, maybe you've seen it before um, in this session. If you've seen it somewhere else before, there must be Docs42 installation. Um, it, it basically just lets you generate a document based just on entity data, and it will even take the filter. So basically, the, the Contoso Asia, like you see here, with just entity data and the very same principle to what Lisa has shown you before, again, in that SharePoint library. And there is a vendor fact sheet next to our sales invoice. And if, again, similar to the email, open this in my word, I will be able to change any of the data in here. One thing that I just briefly want to show you in terms of the performance, um, if I click on generate up here, I will not include a filter this time. So on the server side, I've had a, I had a filter that it just was for Asia Contoso. Um, in this case, I will just include all of them, which is going to produce a document of 250 pages with the repetition about all of them. And as you will see, this will move up in a second. And we will scroll down all the way to. So it even takes word longer to process the document <laughs> that we've just generated. But you see it down here, very small, that we've just created a document with around 250 pages. Cool. Um, that's basically the, the starting point to do FinOps. Um, if you want to see some demos um, or have more some, some, some more questions around this, please just contact us. Like we've said in the beginning, Docs42 is not only document automation for FinOps, it can also be for other applications. And similar to a trigger that can be in FinOps, that can be, for example, into a flow, that can be CE, the same thing also applies to SharePoint. And license-wise, what is integrated into FinOps has already the license included to use, for example, something like this with SharePoint, and in this case, not Word, but PowerPoint. So let's just dynamically generate a new PowerPoint presentation, which um, we have two different design options in here, which in, in the background are just two different PowerPoint templates, but the same data sources. And if I generate this, in this case, it's not only the data that's coming from SharePoint, but it's also connected to a SQL database um, in, in terms of the data source, which perfect, perfectly fits to, to in the beginning when we had the technologies, some of you were interested in, in SQL. So basically a trigger that's come from, in this case, SharePoint, can have data from SQL and be a nice looking PowerPoint document that I just open here. Also, with a repetition, like similar to what we've seen with the sales lines, in this case with the people, but also with some, some cool charts in here. If I want to do this for another design, looking at the time, there's not much left. <laughs> so there's the sales report, another design. It will take the very same data, just a different design. Um, yeah, and before moving back um, to, to the slides, um, not very many of you have been interested in CE today. If you want to see CE with Docs42, of course, um, with, with the Power Community, there will be some CE focus where you can see this, or if you want to see this in a demo, just get in touch with us. And yeah, the, the same data as you've seen, but in this case, different design. Still the same approach to take data and generate nice looking charts based on the SQL data. All right, maybe just very briefly, still CE, just as a teaser for those that are interested in. I will just generate one quote really quick from solar panels. And there's complex one that combines SharePoint and CE. Um, but there are also other ones, and I'm just going to do a very simple sales quote click down here. Well, this is going to basically take the data from CE and produce the document. And I hope in many cases of the one thing that you've seen today, we have been using our cloud application for this. Well, you of course can also work with this on, on premise, um, but performance wise, the cloud has been really good to us today, which in a live demo is always a great case.
Right. Let's conclude. You've seen this today. It's about it's about intelligent documents that can be design friendly in terms of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, can be in your application, but can also stick to the Microsoft and ERP trends. So since um, well, it used to be just AX and just CE, a CRM and just an NAV. Now it's becoming all dynamics, everything moving closer together, and with a document solution that can get the data from different ones. Um, you're up for the Microsoft and ERP trends. Before the time is over, now is the perfect time for any of your questions. Thank you so much, your hands and Lisa for that session. There's lots of questions. Um, so the first question is by Soheib. He's a very famous Microsoft MVP. Um, he's asked, um, I have a question. What if a change to the underlying schema of the database uh, would be reflected into the design time automatically. Say I added a new table to FinOps, and this table got has no relationship with the existing data source of the report. Can I make use of this new table into the existing report by defining the custom relationship into the design time? Yeah, so I guess there's many answers to this. First of all, the data, if data changes, for example, in the data provider, or somewhere else in FinOps, um, of course, you can just synchronize the data again and it would be accessible as one of those blue fields in the data source. Then the way you link different data sources for us, it's, it's a filter. It's based on a primary key. So basically, if the primary key fits to the next entity or report or data source, it will then, if there are new fields linked to this, and of course, in a table, um, if that was the question, if in a table you'd add a new column, for example, that would then also get repeated for this. Um, it's basically just a matter of putting the fields in here. And one thing that I'm not sure if really was in the question, but is a, is some, is a question that we get a lot is um, we can link reports to entity data. So it not, it's not necessarily um, needed to program in the data provider. Of course, it's the more beautiful way and the, and the more correct way but it's an option to also link to an entity, which can reduce your performance in a little bit. But if it's a document that you produce every, I don't know, monthly, and it's just a matter of three seconds or four seconds, or maybe even a second or two seconds, um, that would be the answer to this. I hope it covered the question. There's lots of, there's there's lots more questions. <laughs> so uh, that's, so the next, the next one is, I am assuming the program uses O data endpoint exposed by FNO for fetching the table data. Does the number of records or size of the table matter? If a table has lots of records, would the word just hang for a long time or crash? So the question would be if it's the, the table from, from the report or the entity table? The entity table, yeah. Entity table, yeah. Like you said, it's O data. Um, it's it the the O data getting the O data is, is it's correct. It's twenty five megabytes just to getting the structure for us to download. Um, but eventually, like the there's on the service, you can configure the time the service can run. Um, we haven't really had the issue of it crashing. Um, but of course, it would be up to a 30 day trial license to do a penetration test if that could cause it to eventually even crash. And how do they apply for the, the free 30 day um, license? Is it, ju is it just the docs42.com um, website, www.docs42.com? Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so post that in the chat. Um, next question is. Um, is it possible to work with temporary tables, aggregated data? Can you map XML files as a data source? That's by Aline. Thank you very much. Perfect question. And um, as we've seen in the data mapping, part of this is um, XML and also JSON. And if in this, um, this would be something coming from an OData or REST interface, XML JSON would be your data source to go. OK, so we have lots of people joining the call, so please mute your microphones if you've just joined us, please. Hi there, you on? Please um, mute your microphone. Thank you. Um, next question is, um, Suzanne, are label languages sensitive depending on 
the customer's language. Let's say the labels in DE as well as in uh, French uh, and Italian yeah. and in English with one document for all my customers in different countries across Europe. Mm. So the best practice that we have at the moment for labels is to even have them in, in Excels, which at the beginning sounds like an interesting approach. Um, we've had this with many customers that they started with the labels. So basically one Excel sheet where you can maintain all the labels. And this has already been programmed. So basically taking it dynamically from FinOps, but the convenience of the Excel table has led to not really being in a request high enough to even make it in the product yet. But if um, yeah, if if anybody ever requires not to use the Excel, then it can be in the product. But the Excel is the is the easiest way to to maintain the labels. Great. Okay. okay. Something think about multi language, but I'm not really sure if this is going to explode the the next session in terms of timing. So. Yep, that's right. I think uh, we are end of our time. Uh, let's have a quick look to see if there's. One final question. Um, yeah, so if you've got any more questions, please email. Um, would you like to share the best email to contact you, please? Yeah, yes. sure. And, yeah, uh, and if you can share the slide or your email. That's true. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Good, Good call. Um, and, the easiest would be either us directly, um, or you can also go to info at docs42.com, which also is in our inbox um, as we then distribute the, the. So the easiest probably is info at docs42.com. Um, and of course, we are both on LinkedIn. I'm happy to share some, some thoughts on, on this with you there as well. Excellent, guys. There's been a lot of interest. Um, and thank you once again um, for supporting the community especially the FinOps community, which doesn't get much love, uh, but I think that's changed. And uh, as you can see from the success and all the people here today. So again, thank you, Docs42, Lisa and Johans. Uh, and uh, yes, um, so we look forward to seeing you again um, at the next event, maybe a CE event or Power Platform. Um, but in the meantime, you have their contact details, so feel free to get in touch with them um, to spin up your trial. Uh, and if you have any further questions and connect with them on uh, via their personal emails and their LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, Thank so you so much again, Russ. One yeah. more thing, I think we the, the bootcamp, the automation bootcamp is one or two weeks. So if you're interested in the in the connection with Flow, Power Automate or Docs42, um, we'll, we'll see you there. And thanks again, yeah. Russ. Great event, great Thank event, great guys. organization. Yeah, that's a good reminder to everyone, actually, that there is an automation bootcamp happening literally this time next week. Um, so for those who are interested, there you go. You can see the, the